Well, good evening out there in TV land. Um, debating, as again, Pastor Hal mentioned, uh, Pastor Scott and Pastor Dylan got to go yesterday. If you remember, last week Pastor Dylan made fun of Pastor Scott a lot, a lot. Um, I was thinking about doing the same thing, but I cannot make fun of preacher. Um, so, as Pastor Hal mentioned on Sunday, uh, if he was going to tear apart the pulpit with the sledgehammer and stuff, God wouldn't bless that. I don't think God would bless me if I made fun of preacher. Um, so, we're going to go to Ephesians chapter 5. I am going to talk about a topic tonight uh, that is dear to my heart, something that the Lord is currently taking me through. Um, when Pastor Al asked us to come up with a topic for family emphasis, um, this was a couple days before the Lord uh, taught me this lesson from the book of Ephesians, a familiar passage. Uh, but yet going through the process and reading God's word and reading different books and seeking advice from people, the Lord's brought me to a place. I'm going to preface this. I am not going to be able to cover everything when it comes to this topic of managing your time. Nor am I an expert when it comes to this area, not even close. I have realized, though, that how I spend my time, plan my time, and share my time is so important. For me, I was wasting a lot of it. Um, I was, at the end of days, looking back and wondering, did anything get done? Did I accomplish anything today? Uh, did I do anything for the Lord today? It just felt like some days were just wasted. And I came to this passage in Ephesians chapter 5, and the Lord got a hold of my heart. And then, as I mentioned uh, earlier, has been just walking me through this. And I'm, first of all, thankful that we serve such a good and gracious God. Um, but at the same time, I am thankful that I am doing my best by His grace to listen to Him. Um, and I thank the Lord for that. So Ephesians chapter 5, we're going to talk about, once again, managing your time Manage your time. Again, some time management thoughts here quickly this evening. Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 15, 16, and 17. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And before I continue here, let's pray, and we'll get right into the lesson here this evening. Dear Lord, we thank you so much just for, as been mentioned a few times this evening, Lord, how good you are. And I thank you for that, Lord. I pray that you just calm my nerves, Lord, be with this time as you put this uh, thought, Lord, on my heart. And it's something, Lord, that you're continuing to work in my life, Lord. But I pray that what you've given me here this evening, Lord, just be an encouragement to our church family and to anybody out there listening. I pray, Lord, that you continue to teach me in my life and in my family's life, Lord. And once again, Lord, I thank you so much for being so good to us, so loving, so gracious, and so kind. I pray that you be with Pastor Olet as he comes up after me, Lord. Bless him, empower him with your spirit. And we pray all this, Lord, in your name. Amen. Thinking about these verses and looking at my life, here's my conclusion. I want to be wise with my time. I want to be wise when it comes to my time. I don't want to waste it. And in my position, and I, I mentioned this to the teachers uh, in one of the meetings that we had, this is not how I wanted my first year to go, right? With, with all the craziness that's happened, not being able to finish the, the school year the, the way that we wanted to, and so many other things. And it's the same thing for Pastor Hal, right? His first year and the craziness that's going on, but the Lord has a plan and a purpose. And even during this time, I want to be wise with the time that the Lord has given me, with the time that I have uh, in, in, in everybody at home as well. It's just we have the same amount of time. It's just completely different now, right? It's more time with family. We can say that if you don't have to go into work every single day, it's more time at home. And if you still have to go to work every single day, it's a little bit different now, right? We have to do things differently. We have to wash. It seems like our hands more often than we've ever had before. And we are constantly, I'm constantly being told by my wife not to touch my face and all these different things that are out there, but it's different, but yet it's still the same amount of time. And as the Lord grabbed the hold of my heart, he said, how are you going to manage your time during this? Because it's so easy for me just to come to work or just to go home and say, all right, what do I got to do today? Let's just get it done and move on. But yet if that's my mindset, nothing ever gets done the right way. Or something gets thrown my way and everything just gets pushed because I am not managing my time wisely. And, the, and just some lessons that I've learned during this time, and hopefully they're an encouragement to you. But lesson number one 
that the Lord has taught me during this time, it's, it's my time, so it's my responsibility on how I'm going to use it. William Penn, an English Quaker le leader and advocate of religious freedom said, time is what we want most, but what we use worst. And it's so true. At the end of a day, it's like, man, I wish I had more time. And yet if we're willing to look back at our day, how did we use the time that we had and that the Lord gave us? And it's so easy if we're not careful that we mismanage our time. Now, again, like I said at the beginning, there's so many things that I could say when it comes to this thing. How you can manage it, get a calendar, write it on a board, do a bunch of different things. And there's so many things that you can research and find on how you can manage your time. But what I hope you understand is that it's your time, so it's your responsibility how you're going to use it. And again, when it comes to our beliefs and what we believe, how are you going to use it for the cause of Jesus Christ? And that's what matters the most. We can never get the seconds, minutes, and hours back. So don't waste them. And yet so many of us, and myself included, as the Lord's walking me through this, it's so easy to go day by day and just waste so much time if we're not careful. So don't waste. Uh, we've heard these phrases before. Don't waste my time. That was a waste of time. Phrases that are used a lot and that I used a lot. But just remember this. This is a reminder. You allowed that to happen. When you say, hey, don't waste my time, or somebody wasted my time, or that was a waste of time, or like I've seen myself recently when it comes to TV shows and even watching like ESPN is throwing up all these old sporting events and all this, you get to the end of it, it's like, yep, that was a waste of time. And we do that so often, but we allow that to happen. So take responsibility for your time and understand that there's a purpose that the time has given, that the time God has given us, there's a purpose for it. So make sure number two, as we go to the second lesson here, seek God's guidance and wisdom for how to manage your time. I was encouraged as a teenager to seek the Lord early in the morning and ask him what I should do with my time and my day. If I want to be wise with my time, and if I want to use my time responsibly, I should seek God's face about it. There's so many things, especially during this time, that we're seeking the Lord's face about. God, when are you going to take us out of this? When are things going to get back to normal? Uh, I, I text kids and students email me back and forth, and we text back and forth, and uh, one of the questions I get the most is, when are things going to go back to normal? And again, my answer is, I have no idea. But yet, how often, when it comes to this situation, are we seeking God's face and asking for guidance and wisdom when it comes to managing our time? Because it's so easy. And I had a day off last week, and uh, Pastor Al was so gracious and kind to give us a day off from work. <laughs> Amen, praise the Lord. And... Uh, I, I, I was planning for that day. This is what I was going to do. I had a plan. My wife had some things that she wanted me to build and some things that we were going to do around the house. And I had a plan for that day. And it started off in a great way. I slept in. That wasn't part of the plan. Although it felt great, but wasn't part of the plan. Ate breakfast a little later. So again, everything gets pushed back because you have to eat breakfast, the most important meal of the day, they say. So you have to eat breakfast. Then, of course, reading my Bible, reading other books, listening to a podcast, everything just gets pushed, pushed, and pushed, and pushed. And then I get to the end of the day, and I look at the things that I wanted to do, and not all of them got done. But yet, when I even look back at that day, and when I look at the beginning of that day, and I had to ask myself, did I ask God for wisdom and guidance to the time that I was managing that day? Ask God for what should be important. Ask God who should be important. Ask God what needs to get done today. Ask, ask, ask. James 1 verse 5, if any of you lack wisdom, wisdom, let him ask of God, that give it to all men liberally, and upbraid it not, and it shall be given him. There's a promise. So take it and ask. Because he's going to give you an answer. And when it comes to managing your time, especially with this current situation that we have, he's going to give you an answer. If you ask, he's going to give you wisdom. He's going to guide you through your day. 
Number three, lesson number three as we're moving on here. As going through this process and asking the Lord for wisdom and guidance, number three, create a plan. A couple quotes here. If you want to make good use of your time, you've got to know what's most important and then give it all you got. I know in my life that my wife, Ashley, who's at home right now, is very important. I can say that all I want. But if I'm not willing to give her all I have, she's never going to know it. Because it's so easy to say, Ashley, I love you. Easy. Very easy to do. I do my best to do it every day. But what's hard sometimes is to show that love. So I have to make sure that for me and the plan that I'm creating, because she's important to me, and God, of course, has told me that she's important to me, that I manage my time with her and make sure that that's an important time in my day. When it comes to my work and the teachers that I have and the things that need to get done in the workplace and the things that need to get done in the school office and all these different things, make sure that you create a plan and that you follow through with it. By failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. Benjamin Franklin. The attitude or mindset of whatever happens, happens. That mindset, whatever happens, happens. And I've had that before. And there's been days where I felt, you know what? I have no control of this day, so whatever happens, happens. Is a foolish way to live life. It really is. Seek God's wisdom and schedule your life. There is so much research out there that you can find on how to plan and how to schedule. From billionaires to millionaires to entrepreneurs, stay-at-home moms, working dads, and straight-A students, they all have plans and they all manage their time wisely. I read and I was listening to an audiobook and this story caught my attention. There is a very smart, in my mind, employee who worked for some big company in New York City. He was getting paid $200,000 a year to do his job. Pretty nice job. He, using some wisdom, decided that he was going to offset his job to a man in Japan and pay that person $50,000 to do his entire job. And the eight hours a day that he spent at his workplace, he spent searching the internet, on social media, and doing other things that further his personal life. A couple months later, his company was looking at the servers and saw that there was a lot of activity being done in Japan using their servers. They thought they were being hacked, so they looked into it and found that one of their employees was sending all their work somewhere else. Yet when you look at that, he was managing his time wisely. He was able to make $150,000 doing nothing. We would say, some people would say, that's a smart man right there. He had a plan. And he followed through with his plan. And if all of us had that same opportunity, most of us would take it as well. But yet, when it comes to scheduling our lives, like we said, make sure you seek God first, create a plan, and follow through with that plan. Because in my life, it's easy to create a plan, and sometimes when life happens, to get away from that plan. Lesson number four, and this is one of the hardest things for me, but lesson number four, stay organized. Lord Chesterfield said this, take care of the minutes, and the hours will take care of themselves. Be organized. Be detailed. When you're creating your plan, be detailed. Be specific. Figure out, again, seeking God's wisdom and guidance. Figure out what is important, what needs to get done in that day. And make sure that you're organized when it comes to your completion of your plan. I can put down a sheet of everything I would like to accomplish. But with organization, nothing gets done. My favorite quote when it comes to organization is, and a lot of people have said this over the phone or through quotes or whatever, when they look at some workplaces, what kind of circus are you running there? Because when somebody walks into a workplace or when somebody walks into a home, you can tell if it's organized or not. And yet some people can look at other people's lives, and I know this was the case in my own life. I can look at my life and say, man, it is crazy. What's happening? What's going on? And it's because I wasn't completely organized when it came to managing my time. Lesson number five. Just uh, two more here. Lesson number five. And an important one for me, eliminate the unimportant. 
There are some things that are just not important. Sports, not that important. I played a lot of sports in my life and got to compete in a lot of different scenarios. And like I tell a lot of people, and I say this a lot, all I got from it is a lot of pain, a lot of hurt knees, a lot of back pain. My wife telling me to get up and showing no mercy. That's what I got from it. It's fun. I enjoy it. I enjoy playing it, but just not that important. So when I'm faced with the decision between playing a sport or spending time with my wife, easy one. Spending time with my wife. When it comes to reading God's word or watching a sporting event on TV, reading God's word. We have to look at the time that we have and the things that we have in our lives and figure out what's just not important. To do two things at once is to do neither. You can't. I was looking for this video. Uh, I did this when I was in high school as a science experiment. You bought two big pump pumpkins. You got a big, like, a jug of water and you try to balance both of them and push them down at the water at the same time, it's not that easy. One's gonna come up or you gotta let one go, you push it all the way down and then try to get the other one and you're always going back and forth. It's difficult to do two things at once. So figure out what's not important, push it off to the side and focus on the things that God wants you to focus on when it comes to managing your time. Figure out what's important. I pray that you see God about what is important in your life and what should be important. Family time, spending time with God, relationships, academics, exercise, traveling, money, cars, whatever it is. See God's face about it and manage your time wisely. Lastly here, number six, be willing to look back and examine your day. One of the things that I, I've come across countless times when it comes to reading different books and reading different articles is successful people are willing to look back at their day and see how they did. That's difficult because most of the time we're going to see things that we did wrong and we have to be willing to admit, you know what, that didn't go well, that was a bad choice, shouldn't have said that, shouldn't have posted that, should have taken that picture. Are we going to be willing to examine our days, look back and say, you know what, how did I do today? And at that same time, before you go into it, one of the things that I've challenged myself personally is before I examine my day to ask God to show me the things in my life that I did wrong. Go in prayer just a couple minutes before you go to examine your day and ask God, God, show me those things. Because we're going to look over and be like, oh, that wasn't that big of a deal or that was fine or that worked out and that turned out okay. But yet we didn't manage our time wisely. So again, as I said at the beginning, I'm not able to cover everything in detail the way that I would like when it comes to this, nor am I an expert when it comes to this area. But as we read in Ephesians chapter 5, and I encourage you, it's the same way that the Lord is encouraging me, I want to be wise, and I want to be wise with my time. Because it's valuable. And God has given us this time, especially now, so let's use it for His honor and His glory. Dear Lord, once again, I thank you so much for the things that you continue to teach me in my life, Lord, and this being a big area on how I manage my time to bring honor and glory to you. I pray, Lord, that all of us be willing, Lord, just to examine this area in our lives. How are we using our time? How are we managing it? What's important? What shouldn't be important? Lord, I pray that you show us these things in our life. I ask, Lord, that you continue to do the same in mine. I pray, Lord, that you be with Pastor Olet. Once again, Lord, empower him with your spirit as he brings this message, Lord, that you put on his heart. And I pray all this, Lord, in your name. Amen.